Today we are uh, starting a new chapter. The name of this chapter is the stresses due to bending. Okay. So we have seen earlier that what happens if you are uh, having a uh, bar subjected to, if you have a bar here, if you are subjected to tension, then there were some amount of uh, tensile stresses built inside. And if you are having something subjected to compression, then what will happen? It will bulge like this and then there will be compressive stresses at this point. Now we are having some stresses developed in the system because of the bending itself. We can see over here. You can see here if I just make it little big, if I make it little big and you can see over here because of bending what has happened. So this has bent like this and like this because of this bending you can see in the bottom portion, in the bottom portion this is getting elongated. So means what is happening here, here you will have some tensile stresses built up. Okay, whereas on the top, what is happening? It is getting compressed, is it not? So on the top, there is some compression. Somewhere down the line, somewhere in between, somewhere in between over here, no stresses will be developed. Okay, that layer is called as the neutral layer. You can see over here. You have a layer over here. This layer is called as a neutral layer and the axis is called the neutral axis. Where is the location of this neutral axis? The location of this neutral axis depends upon the cross section. What is the type of cross section? So here what is happening? If you are having a rectangular cross section, it is symmetrical exactly. This is called as y, the distance of the farthest layer from the neutral axis. It might be this or it might be this. It depends upon the type of section. If your section is rectangular, then the neutral axis will be exactly in the middle and you will have uh, what you call uh, your uh, neutral axis exactly in the middle okay so let me fix it back okay so now here i can see now now what is happening because of this on the top layers so it is like this on the top layers if you are having like this if you are having a beam like this if your neutral axis is somewhere over here because of the bending what is happening in the bottom you have tensile stresses okay whereas in the top what is happening in the top you have got compressive stresses let me use another color you have some stresses which are compressive stresses okay so now as we said the distance of the farthest layer from the neutral axis we call it as y okay because of this, there is some bending moment introduced in the system. Because of that, you have got the stresses in the beam. Okay, now let us go over here. You have got the formulas over here. See, what is the formula of flexure? And in the formula for bending, you have got M by I is equal to sigma by Y is equal to E by R. Okay, so now this radius is here. We assume that the beam is bending and to perfect arc of a circle. If you are having perfect arc, what will happen? You have got some radius. That radius is present over here. Okay. E is what X modulus. This depends upon the beam material. Y is the distance of the farthest fiber we said. Sigma is the stress induced. M is what? Bending moment. That is maximum bending moment in the beam. It can be at any point. Okay. It depends upon where we have applied the load for example you have a long beam like this there is a support here there is a support over here so what is happening i am applying a force exactly in the middle what is happening you have studied in bending moment and shear force diagram that you have got maximum bending happening somewhere over here is it not so maximum bending moment is happening over here which you can easily calculate if you know the forces reactions all these things you can calculate maximum bending moment so you know this what is I? I is nothing but area moment of inertia. I is nothing but area moment of inertia. We can have different equations from it. Okay. So if I take these two together, if I have these two parts together, what can I write? I can write M by I is equal to sigma by Y. Therefore, I can write sigma as what? Sigma is equal to m by i multiplied by y understand 
So where will be the stress maximum? The stress will be maximum at the farthest layer from the neutral axis. It can be on this side or this side. So you can write as what? Sigma maximum. If you want to have maximum stress, what you should have? Your M also should be maximum, is it not? M also should be maximum divided by I multiplied by Y also should be maximum. Correct. That's what he writes over here. See? Sigma maximum is equal to M into Y maximum by I maximum. Is it clear? Now by managing this one, what you can do? You can easily write, let us say if I want M maximum, what I will do? I will cross multiply, that's all. Okay. And then I will bring this one this side. I will have M maximum is equal to, I will take this one sigma max into I by Y max. Okay. This I by Y max is called as section modulus. Okay. Sometimes in the problem, what they do is they will give you section modulus. In such case, you have to just multiply sigma with section modulus to get maximum bending moment. Okay. Now let us go over here. What we have, we want the value of I. So what is the value of I? I is nothing but area moment of inertia. Right. Area moment of inertia is I. It is nothing but B. We have got B here. D is the depth BD cube by 12. Okay. So this is what is your Young's this one area moment of inertia. If you want Z, Z is what? Z is equal to I divided by Y maximum, we say, is it not? What is Y maximum for this one? The center of neutral axis is here. So this is your Y maximum. This is your Y maximum. So what is the value of Y maximum? It is written as D by 2 because you know the depth is D. So if I take that one, what will happen? Z is equal to I by Y max means you just write it. If you write it, P, P cube by 12, is it not? And Y max is what? D by 2. D divided by 2. 2 gets cancelled here. You are left with Sita. This D goes and here you are left with it. So that's what he writes. See, B, D square by 6, is it not? This is a section modulus for a solid rectangular beam okay if you are having a uh, solid circular beam here see what is the area moment of inertia pi into d to the power of 4 by 64 okay so what is the distance of the farthest fiber from the neutral axis see this is the neutral axis from here to here this is how much this is nothing but d divided by 2 correct so therefore i can write z is equal to pi d to the power of 4 by 64 multiplied by because z is what z is nothing but i divided by y max is it not y max in my case is what d by 2 d by 2 this gets cancelled here left with 32 this goes and this goes you will get 3 so you have what y d cube by 32 see that is what he is writing over here okay now similarly what we are doing is we are finding out here uh, your hollow shaft is there, your hollow beam is there. In case of hollow beam, you have outside diameter and inside diameter. You have Z and uh, I mean I, I is pi d to the power of 4 by 64. So you have D naught minus Di and Z is nothing but you have to divide by the farthest fiber. Farthest fiber is what? Farthest fiber from here to this one is what? This is D divided by 2, is it not? So D he right here, it was uh, I is equal to what? pi into t to the power of 4 minus t to the power of 4 by 64 multiplied by y max is what? d divided by 2. This 2 goes with 32 here it makes. You just write it. pi by 32 into d to the power of 4 minus d to the power of 4 divided by capital D. That's what he writes over here. Okay. So this is for area moment of inertia. Right. If you know area moment of inertia, all other things you can very comfortably do. So now we have got this problem. We will uh, talk about this problem separately, okay? Because the space is less, I will uh, put it in a separate sheet.